Hey, in this video, I will introduce you to the batteries and waste batteries regulation. As you may know, this regulation replaces the existing battery directive, and it's essentially building on the same foundation, but it does clarify labeling requirements, documentation, and, and so on, which I will cover in this video. I also want to uh, say, say right now that I would not be able to cover the entirety of, of this new this new regulation. It's uh, too long and too complex for that, but I believe that I can at least deliver a, a fairly comprehensive uh, introduction. Right, so I will go into the scope, then look into restricted substances, documentation, labeling, EPR, and lab testing requirements. Let's begin with the scope. Now, the regulation essentially applies to all types of batteries, and it also covers batteries that are um, built into products. So if you sell a product or you sell a, a device that comes with a battery, like a power bank and well, what else, IoT products and so on, then uh, this regulation also concerns you or your business. There's some exemptions, but I'm not going to go into details about that. But if I remember correctly, it concerns military equipment, um, space industry, and so on which is not really what our audience is interested in. So anyway, with that said, let's look into the substance restrictions. And you may be familiar with these if, if, you, have, if, if, you, if you have been selling batteries before and, and uh, ensuring compliance with the previous battery directive. In any case, there are substance restrictions under this regulation as well concerning mercury, cadmium, and lead. Right, not much more to say here. Let's look into the documentation requirements, and they're far more extensive when it comes to this regulation. For starters, you need a declaration of conformity. That's something you already need if you are selling electronics under the EMC directive, the LVD, ROHS, RED, and so on. But now there's an individual declaration of conformity uh, requirement specified in, in, in this case, in Annex 9 under this battery regulation. Technical documentation is also outlined. Um, fairly clear term so you go to annex 8 for that uh, instructions are now required test reports are mentioned and for some in, in this case for um, ev batteries and, and industrial batteries you also need what is now called a carbon footprint declaration there's additional requirements when it comes to recycled content in certain batteries and again, industrial applications and electric vehicles are mentioned. And also when it comes to high capacity batteries. If you're selling uh, consumer electronics, primarily be concerned with the first four items. Another difference is that now C marking applies directly to the battery itself. Uh, previously, I believe that the battery directive did not uh, it did not include the C mark. Of course, electronic devices still C marked, but now there's C marking requirements directly to to the battery itself. And in any case, you can find details in Article 19 and 20 if a notified body is required. And that depends on the battery type. Then you also need to include a identification number of said notified body. And when it comes to certain risks, I'm not 100%, but I also believe that will be relevant to, say, certain industrial applications and so on, then you may need a pictogram. They also specify that um, it is to be, the C mark is to be uh, affixed directly to the battery, and that's normally permanent. So I think we will see C marks directly on batteries pretty soon. And this is the C mark. Right, let's look into traceability. Now, traceability is, that's another set of labeling requirements that's already part of products and need to be C-marked. So it's, it's not really groundbreaking. It's not new in any way. If you're selling electronic devices today, you should be familiar with this. It's just that now it also applies to the battery. So you're looking at model identification, batch or serial number, product number, essentially to identify the product, but not just that, also the batch. So in case you need to, 
you need to issue a recall, then you can not just trace the product, but also the specific production run or the batch. Manufacturer name, registered trade name, registered trademark, postal address, web and email address, if available. This is what is written in, as you can see, Article 38, Part 6 and 7. Annex 6 is... Um, is interesting because this is this is a set of uh, let's say battery specific labeling requirements and as you can see here they list uh, what they call part a general information on batteries this is it seems to me anyway that this is information that should be printed on the batteries they are again referencing article 38 that i just briefed you on but then there's also uh, the origin and this is this is this is so this is not worthy because I think that that is new when it comes to electronics at least date of manufacture, weight capacity, the chemistry. If there are any additional hazardous substances, which can be hard to assess, extinguishing agent, well, lithium battery fires. That's uh, not something you want to encounter. Part B, there's also a symbol. I think there was something similar in place under the, the battery directive, but in any case, that's also here. And then we have part C, which is also a uh, particular interest, which is a QR code. Um, they require a QR code. And I believe that's also something that's new when it comes to product compliance uh, in the EU. And again, you can find all of this information in Annex 6. Uh, in in the regulate in, in the regulation itself in the in the in the legislation text. Go and see for yourself. Okay, it's been a lot of labeling requirements, but uh, there's more. It's also Article Thirteen, and uh, this is uh, essentially concerning the the timeline for for. Um, certain labeling requirements and, and the conditions for certain types of batteries, non-rechargeable batteries, and so on and so forth. I'm not, not going to go into detail here. But um, if you are interested, well, that's the wrong term. You, if, if you're selling batteries or battery powered devices, then you, you should definitely go and have a look at Article 13 because additional conditions uh, when it comes to labeling and marking of batteries that you will find in, in this article. Right, extended producer responsibility or EPR. So this is a concept that essentially refers to uh, sellers, meaning brands, uh, being responsible or taking responsibility for uh, recycling, collection, storage, and so on after the product has been used up. And what this means in practice is that producers must make financial contributions for the cost associated with the supplied product. And you can find more details in, I think it's in Article 56 and on. But this is something that's done on a national level, as far as I know anyway, in the EU. I think this is not entirely new, even when it comes to, to batteries. It's something that sellers must deal with when it comes to packaging. And I don't have any direct experience myself when it comes to EPR programs for batteries. But if it's anything like uh, EPR for packaging waste, then the way it works is that you provide, well, you need to register um, nationally, which could, could be in more than one EU country, if you sell in more than one country. And um, you also need to, to, to pay a fee on, it could be a monthly basis or maybe a yearly basis, based on the projected uh, sales volume and that could maybe in the future also depends on, on on previous year's volumes and so on so that you are financing the the um, the collection and the recycling of, of batteries that's that's the that's the core concept of of epr so that's also part of the battery regulation Finally, let's look into testing requirements. And I, I don't think there's any w one single segment uh, dedicated uh, to, to testing, but we did find um, we did find 
uh, testing requirements spread out. So I would quote two of these. Now that's not everything there is to, to testing, but in any case, so under manufacturing, and I'm not sure exactly which part that was, but they state anyway that manufacturers, battery manufacturers must operate an approved quality system for production, final inspection and testing of the batteries concerned. Obligation of importers then. Well, they make it clear that you need to essentially verify compliance and also carry out sample testing of marketed batteries. Now, I batteries are a bit different. It's not really that a lot of brands are going to the battery market. I believe batteries are quite it's quite commoditized, perhaps the, the right word. So I think most say consumer electronic brands or uh, companies developing products that use different types of batteries they may not be manufacturing the batteries themselves or buying these from say what could it be samsung sony tdk max maxwell uh, i'm not sure about all the brands but i think going forward it will be absolutely essential that you as a brand can absolutely secure that the batteries used in your products that you manufacture in china or vietnam uh, or anywhere in the world for that matter, that these the batteries that are in your supply chain are compliant with the provisions of the battery regulation because it will be very expensive for you to go through all this documentation and manage everything uh, as if you were the manufacturer. And and what this means is that you need to you, you need to know uh, which brand and which 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 SKU uh, is used like which specific brand okay we want to use sony batteries and it should be this model and i would say that you need to even take uh, a step beyond that you need to really know your supply chain you need to, you can't just let your supplier um, source locally but you need to know which say um, are you buying from the from the actual source or or some middleman or something because you absolutely need to be certain that you have this documentation. It would be very expensive and very, very um, time consuming to manage all the compliance requirements as, as a manufacturer. That doesn't mean that you can transfer all of these obligations um, to the component supplier, but you could likely simplify it quite a bit that way. So yeah, um, definitely requires that you, you have a, you control your supply chain, you know where your batteries come from, you know the exact brand, you know the exact model, and ideally you buy them directly from the brand if, if you can do that. But yeah, testing is needed either through obtaining existing test reports, or you will need uh, you will need third party testing because there's a lot of batteries that are from, let's say, mysterious sources or OEM batteries. Oh, batteries not made for the European market in the first place. There's a lot of countries and markets in the world that simply don't have the strict battery requirements that exist in the EU, and there's also safety requirements to to be concerned with. So that's that's another part, and that's why testing is absolutely essential. Right. Now, in some cases, if you go down the path of, of having the battery tested, in, in, in some cases, you may be able to get away with module A, internal production control. You could use, let's say, um, any legit uh, testing company. But if your battery is covered by one of these modules, then you may need to go with a um, you may need to go with a notified body, and a notified body is is a designated testing and certification company. Just so you know, different types of batteries and well, um, different categories of batteries fall within different different modules. And I'm not going to go into details about that because that could be a video on its own. But you can find information about this on Article 17. Okay, so um, I hope you understand the battery regulation a bit better than when you started watching this video 14 minutes ago. If you have any questions, you can write them either on our website, compliancegate.com. That's compliancegate.com. Or you can also comment if you're watching this video on YouTube.